this is what you see is my mod for my tachometer now the tachometers that are available in the market usually come with two AAA batteries which drain really fast because of the laser pointer installed in the tachometer so to prevent that or to tackle that situation I constructed this device or modified it into a rechargeable one by using two 2000 mAh lithium ion batteries and now it works really well as you can see and the batteries drain in around five or six months or so and when they do i can easily recharge it and guys this what you see is a motor alternator set and this motor is going to be driven by that speed controller box this is the back side of the car alternator and the small and thin red and blue wires that you see those are for exciting the rotor winding of the car alternator by connecting a 12 volts battery and to the left of it is a custom made three phase rectifier since the original rectifier broke link for its construction video will be provided in the description you can check it out that's the battery i'm going to use for the excitation of rotor winding of the car alternator and guys there's one thing i forgot to tell you full output of the car alternator will appear on these two terminals red and black so guys now it's time to connect this 12 volts ups battery and these two jumper cables to the rotor winding terminals of this alternator okay red will be connected to red and blue is going to be the negative although polarity does not matters here and you see the connection has been successfully made so guys before starting the machine let's point the meter towards voltage measurement mode and connect the pins and the pin outs to the output terminals of the alternator so meter terminals have been successfully connected so guys you can see that the tachometer is fully set and the meter at present is pointing zero volts so let's connect the battery terminals to the rotor winding and start the test okay so first let's turn on the motor and the laser pointer so guys here as you can see that i'm getting here around 1300 rpm and the voltage is around 1.5 volts and uh, uh, it is happening something with my hand so anyways that is just uh, the ripple effect okay so anyways i have not connected this terminal from the rotor winding to the battery to activate the rotor so let's do that and check the change in rpm and also see if it reaches 12 volts or more or less you can see that the rpm has reduced to 1000 and the voltage is around 11.45 so we will have to increase the rpm a little bit so i'm going to do it from here that's the knob let's keep this connected and here we are getting around 11.7 volts at 1200 rpm although fluctuating a lot increasing it a little bit and the voltage is also increasing yeah so 1300 rpm yeah 1300 rpm is at what the alternator is producing exact 12 volts dc okay so that's all for today's video guys let's turn off the setup first removing this terminal and you can see as soon as i remove the terminal the speed increased because when the electromagnet gets excited the rpm reduces because this motor gets loaded so it takes little more power from the source to compensate for the lost rpm this what you see is a 12 volts 180 watts mono crystalline type of solar panel manufactured by loom solar the cost price of this panel is 8500 indian rupees and to buy it you can go to the link provided in the description so guys here in this video i am going to carry out a few tests including 
the voltage measurement the current measurement and few dc loads because the panel output is dc also guys if you have a few projects that you would like me to carry out in my upcoming project videos do let me know in the comment section this solar company also offers 25 years of warranty so guys here as you can see that it states the maximum power being 180 watts maximum power voltage is 20 volts maximum power current 9.01 amperes with a short circuit current of 9.53 amps and an open circuit voltage of 22.5 volts So guys, at present it is 10.30 am and I have placed the solar panel according to the direction of the sunlight and at the required angle. And the two black wires that you see there, those are the output wires I am getting. Now guys, the wires that you usually get from solar panels, they are not long enough and these wires, they are high voltage handling capability type of wires. So I am going to use an extension of 4mm Havel's copper wires. So before I do the connections, I will have to first find out the polarity with the help of the multimeter. So which one is positive and negative and then accordingly connect the blue one to the positive and black to the negative. So let's connect the clips. And here as you can see guys the multimeter is showing around 20.78 volts and uh, there is a negative sign which indicates that the polarity is reversed so this one is the negative so let's connect the black copper wire to the negative and negative denoted by black again and blue by positive so that also done so guys now you have seen the voltage which was 20.83 volts so let's do the current measurement with the help of dc clamping so first we have to point the meter towards 600 amperes current mode so with that being done let's clamp it to one of the wires now we have to short circuit the black and blue wires to find out the maximum current flow possible with the help of this multimeter okay so let's first check out the spark You can hear the sound I think, it is really difficult to see it in so much sunlight. Let's see the current. So guys here as you can see I am getting around 7 amperes, 6.83 and it is morning time. The maximum rated current is around 9.01 amperes for maximum efficiency. So at present I am getting around 7 amperes which is considerably good. Now guys here as you can see that there are few bulbs and I have chosen this one. This is uh, rated at 24 volts and 250 watts. Although it is going to need around 10 amperes which this solar panel is not producing right now because of the morning timing. So let's check it out. Okay so guys here what you see is the bulb that I showed you and I am going to hold it with this because it is going to get really hot. And also the terminals are really close so then again it is dangerous that way. Okay now it is fine. <laughs> is glowing fully bright 250 watts bulb although it needs 10 amps but the available is around 7 amperes which is fine it's really hot so you see how powerful the solar panel is now guys for those of you who are not familiar with that bulb this is a car headlamp bulb so i'm going to try this one you see it is glowing really bright cool the maximum current drawing capability of this motor is around 27 amperes. Now it is not loaded at the moment but still the starting current is also going to be high because it is a high current motor. Although the motor is 24 volts but this panel is producing somewhere around 20 volts which should be enough to start it. You see it is running at a really high speed. Let's keep it connected with a clip okay you see that's the solar panel these are the wires coming out from the solar panel no other wire is given and that's the motor running at a really high speed 
you can understand it by the sound it is making and that's the label 24 volts 500 watts with a maximum current of up to 27 amperes so guys here i've connected the wires of this blower you see these green wires have been connected to the solar panel wires extension and now let's test how it runs okay that's the switch very high speed now let's see how fast it blows the air So guys this what you see is the 17 by 8 drone propeller and this is a 22 amperes DC motor 12 volts very high current 22 amps so I'm going to run this motor only with this solar panel directly no battery or anything okay so I've already connected one wire black wire this blue still needs connection okay you see it's running so fast Once again, from this side. Cool. This what you see is an old car battery 12 volts 35 ampere R and this battery has been lying around for almost a year and a few days back I filled it with rainwater because it was completely dried out. You can see how corroded the terminals are, how dusty the cover is and the water as you can see is completely filled with the plates dipped so the water level is fine it does not need any more change so let's get on with the recovery part of this battery now guys if we go for the measurement of the battery voltage pointing the meter towards DC voltage measurement mode as you can see it is showing 6.34 volts it is deeply discharged so I will have to recover it also I'm going to try some load before the recovery process so guys here I'm going to test run this motor with this battery let's see if it can handle the load you see that it is not even starting it maybe the battery is so discharged because of which although it was showing 6 volts the voltage is still dropping so now I'm going to connect the meter and the motor terminals together to the battery at the same time and you see the voltage has dropped to 0.153 volts meaning no voltage left in the battery as soon as I connect the load so guys the battery is dead indeed so let's recover it now guys in my previous video you saw me unbox and review this solar panel so I'm going to use this very panel to recover my old car battery and there is a possibility that I might have to leave it for a day or two and here as you can see that it is drawing around 2 to 2.5 amperes so guys after an hour I'm going to check the current the battery is drawing from the solar panel and here as you can see that the current is as high as 6 amperes so the recovery is under process and uh, the indication is good almost 6 amperes uh, this battery is drawing let's keep it connected and see what happens and also check the voltage at the same time now guys I have connected one wire from the multimeter and uh, the voltage has increased to 14.78 volts which is pretty good so the response is good let's keep it connected for a bit longer after one and a half hour I have disconnected the battery from the solar panel wires now let's check the voltage that this battery has gained and also try some actual load okay so that terminal is the positive and here as you can see that the voltage being reflected is 11.52 so the battery has gained charge and it was in the correct direction of recovery so guys here I'm going to try the same motor this is a 24 volts 500 watts motor with a maximum current drawing capability of up to 26.7 amps whoa you see that the battery is working pretty good 
so this is how you can recover a completely dead battery by using a solar panel it is really safe although you have to take care that the voltage does not go beyond 15 volts because it is going to be unsafe for the battery so guys here i have disconnected the battery again for some time because i wanted to measure the current at present the sunlight is pretty good so let's measure the short circuit current this solar panel is producing at the moment and it is 1 pm right now so that's the multimeter pointing it towards 600 amperes current measurement mode here i have placed one of the wires through the clamp and the other i'm going to touch it here like this you see that the current is around 8.9 to 9.01 amperes removing the battery terminals okay battery is still warm voltage as you can see is 12.08 volts which is almost full charge for this battery now let's test it with actual loads starting the test with a 12 volts 55 watts car headlamp bulb okay wow you see that it is working pretty good it is very hot so that's that and now comes this e-bike motor 27 amperes 24 volts 27 amperes let's check this one see it is running pretty good really nice once again and now finally comes the bike starter motor the maximum current motor that i have starting current is around 35 amperes and uh, like the maximum full load current is around 133 amperes so i'm going to try this one well if this battery runs this motor then it is actually recovered <laughs> working really nice fully recovered battery you can see how we can use a big solar panel to even recover an almost dead battery so guys i hope you learned a lot from this video hit like and don't forget to share and subscribe bye